Okay. Um, so um, thank you for so first let me um, uh, thanks uh, Sita for uh, for inviting me to give this talk. Um, so today I'm going to uh, present uh, some simulation results that uh, I carried out well uh, in McMaster. Um, I'm a CETA National Fellow that arrived at McMaster in uh, October 2006 and uh, did uh, work with um, Rolf and uh, Rashid and uh, his uh, students uh, on jet simulations. So, um, uh, so present some preliminary results. So, um, so part of the, so uh, I'm greatly in debt I just want to point out I'm greatly in debt of my collaborators and uh, Ralph Rashid and also uh, Yan Staff, who is a former student of Rashid uh, in University of Calgary, uh, but uh, he is now a postdoc at Purdue, Purdue University. So I'm partially, because of this collaboration, partially uh, uh, affiliated with uh, uh, CAPCA. So the, this is an acronym for a compute, Computational Astrophysics Group at University of Calgary. So first, I just want to uh, just go over uh, this basic introduction, <coughs> introduction slide of uh, uh, isolated uh, low mass star um, formation, uh, low mass star formation, uh, different evolutionary stage, as uh, probably probably most of pe most of you guys know. Uh, so uh, you start with uh, a gravitational collapse uh, from a, a dense core in the center of dense core. And first uh, is uh, based on uh, based on the SEDs of uh, this uh, young stellar objects. Uh, people classified uh, to uh, to four stages. First, uh, in class zero, is uh, first you form a protostar at the center of the core, uh, and because ang excess angular momentum after uh, only ten thousand years, you have a, a disk, a, a small disk, uh, probably massive disk, form around this protostar. And you have a, a very high mass accretion rate uh, creating to, and well, you have a cr accretion, uh, uh, the access, the actual angular, angular momentum, uh, angular momentum uh, makes uh, naturally give you an outflow that uh, just uh, emit right away from, uh, so it's uh, accretion ejection scenario, and uh, your uh, SED is dominated by the, because it's heavily embedded, so it's dominated by envelope e emission. Um, and later on, when <clears throat> in, the, in the class one stage, you still have the envelope uh, actually accreting and also the outflow, and, but your, your disk is, uh, gradually you can see a disk, but it's still embedded. Um, but eventually, envelope uh, fade away, and uh, by some means, probably uh, outflow help to diffuse envelope away in this stage, actually. Uh, and you ha get a classical t star star on the, the surrounding disk. And uh, in the, uh, finally, you, uh, uh, the, you, you, kind, uh, you kind of uh, gradually shut off the accretion, and you get a weak line t star star observationally. So that's class 3. It's called class 3. And just to show some nice images of jets, oh, um, one one thing I just want, want to emphasize uh, one more, uh, one, one, want to emphasize once more, is is that you get outflow, you get jets and outflow, uh, st start from the beginning, right from the cut zero stage, so um, uh, they play a, a important role in the in the young star young star formation. Uh, actually, in the massive star formation scenario. Uh, it's kind of similar like this, but a little bit different, but still uh, jets and outflow play uh, an active role as uh, I've seen by the observers. So these are kind of some giant jets, actually. Um, this is the, uh, named uh, HH4647. Uh, so to people who don't know, HH means a Herbie Carroll. Uh, that's basically a, 
uh, the name people give to this uh, nebulosity, as Herbie Hero objects. Uh, these are all uh, Hubble, Hubble images. And this one is uh, another famous one. It's actually composite image. This one is uh, H46 is sourced here, and you can see the bow shark here. And the jet, kind of bendy the jet. Uh, this one, this jet is uh, relatively straight. You can see the working surface along the jet. It's called working surface or uh, called knots. And you can you have the ball shark at the jet head. Uh, some of the um, really uh, striking um, observational uh, features that can be used to constrain some uh, jet launching is uh, this rotational is uh, discovery of uh, uh, rotational signatures of jets. Uh, this shows an example. Uh, this on, uh, this uh, this jets observed by uh, Hubble is uh, not are not. Uh, those gigantic jets, because uh, in uh, gigantic jets they are parsec long, and you uh, you have only limited uh, resolving power. So, um, but instead, in this uh, these cases, are uh, they are called uh, usually called micro jets, and they are jets emanated from uh, T Tauri stars usually. And this is one example from Digital. Uh, you can map out really map. The, because it's Titari, it's not embedded, so you can really map out the jets uh, to to somewhere very close to the launching to the launching zone. That that's that is uh, uh, just close to the star of disk. Um, what this is is uh, a, a velocity, radio velocity shift map uh, c constructed from observed radio velocity shifts. I'll show you. Uh, in the next uh, few slides about uh, uh, what uh, what does it mean for radio velocity shifts. Uh, but basically, you can see the rotation uh, kind of two lobes, kind of picture blue and uh, uh, red here. And uh, the rotation rotational velocity is generally only on the order of uh, 10, um, 10 kilometers per second. Um, so that's the unit here. And also, these are integrated through, uh, because the, you only have a, the, the resolution is like 0.15 arc second. If you work out, I work out the, the projection angle, uh, that means actually it's like 34U per pixel. And generally you get lower velocity uh, away from the jet axis. You've got stronger velocity inside. Um, that's, uh, but that's that's actually result of kind of that's show you this kind of signature for differential rotation. Um, so this is some new results um, that just came out because there are a few few other sources Titari jazz, uh, namely uh, HH30, uh, RW, uh, Origa that have been mattered. Uh, but this is some some new results. The peculiarity of this one, this this work is they are uh, jets. They are class one jets, um, so they're still embedded, somewhat embedded. But they managed to get uh, some H two, uh, some molecular hydrogen images out of this, and you can see this. These are from uh, early observations, and this is the slit. Uh, put put it uh, perpendicular to the jet axis, so uh, the the source is at uh, at the region of the coordinates here. So this is for for HH26 is here is this one, and for HH72 is this one, is at zero, and that's the where the slit is. So it's uh, just mirror, a measurement across the jet. So this slide shows the radio velocity diagrams. What is, what is shown here, the solid line is the observation, and uh, the dashed lines are symmetry profiles calculated based on the average of the velocity on two sides. So, so the source is at here. But once, uh, generally, you, uh, you get at the closer to the jet axis, you expect the higher velocities and lower velocity on the, on the, uh, on the other side. But because of your rotation, uh, it's shifted to one direction. 
as you can as you can imagine that the, the rotation uh, rotation means the rotational velocity on two sides are uh, in opposite direction so uh, so that adds to the radial velocity that gives you the shift and you can see that these two this velocity radial velocity shifts are different from uh, different uh, with uh, different sources that means their sense of rotation is in uh, is opposite Because uh, uh, in the jet, send, you're already closer to the jet. You have a high velocity components, and uh, away from the jets, uh, the, the the velocity is is lower. That's oh, okay. yeah. That's, that's generally it's kind of yeah. That's the structure of the jet. I think yeah, really velocity structure. Yeah. Um, so uh, just briefly go over some joint uh, jet launching um, mechanism. There are basically two major ones. Uh, the first one is, of course, uh, Frank Schultz uh, at all. It's uh, wax spin model. Uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm not trying uh, going to try to pre uh, pretend. I'm. I, I'm not. I fully comprehend this. But this is the the paper published in 1994 that shows the scheme of this. Uh, so this is basically, um, uh, the jet is launched through this uh, X point. That This X point is basically the inner disk edge. You have strong magnetic field that interacts with the magnetosphere of the star. Uh, so give you this X point that, uh, uh, and the material goes, goes through here, uh, crept through here, and then get ejected through the, through the field lines. Uh, sort of this open field lines called uh, flow, our final flow is also shown, the, uh, also shown here is the Elfin surface. The Elfin surface is defined as uh, uh, when the Elfin Mach number, which is uh, uh, the velocity of the jet divided by the Elfin velocity uh, uh, equals to one. So, uh, so when, the, when the jet velocity equals to Elfin velocity, that's, that's where Elfin is, Elfin's Often surfaces uh, beyond that is super alphanic flow. Um, inside is uh, sub alphanic, and uh, also you have these funnel flows into the on accretion onto the star. Another alternative uh, mechanism is the disk wind proposed first proposed uh, by Blandford and Payne for, um, uh, for uh, accretion disk around black hole. Um, but then um, Puget Norman uh, generally generalized it to a, a protostellar case too, and here you have inner you uh, you have inner disk uh, uh, to the inner disk edge. This is kind of inner disk, and uh, you have a, some uh, large scale magnetic field uh, in the inner disk, and uh, this is plot particular field lines at foot point radius of R zero. And you have this um, material, basically flux, flux freezing uh, material flows through the field lines through the magnetic centrifugal uh, mechanism. Um, so material crack inward, and then uh, basically uh, once you have this differential rotation of the disk, they generally they just 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 flung out like beads in a wire. So they flung out through this open field lines. Um, uh, so um, in our general, uh, quickly jump to our simulation, uh, this, uh, we have a, uh, oh yeah, uh, Puget starting uh, from 1997, uh, carried a series of simulations, all used a similar setup. So in this uh, kind of pro in this uh, approach, that we have a, a steady state accretion disk, uh, that could be justified by because it's uh, made uh, it's mostly a, 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 process, a two process two competing process. One is once is you have a, a viscous accretion if you assume some sort of angular momentum transfer in the disk in the inner disk, generally uh, by a magnetic. Uh, 
uh, magneto rotational instability MRI. Um, so that's uh, that means it's a viscous accretion. Um, inward, that drag, that accretion of material drag, uh, drag few lines with them. But then you have this magnetic uh, diffusivity, uh, dif magnetic diffusion that try to diffuse the few lines outward. They reach uh, some sort of balance uh, that described by, uh, by this uh, Lubov, Pabloiso, and Pringle 1994 paper uh, and reach, uh, kind of reach a steady state uh, actually, but um, this is a kind of ideali idealized picture. Uh, in reality, the disk uh, do change a lot, uh, evolve as I did the, um, my PhD thesis uh, on disk simulations on gravitational instabilities. And uh, so disk uh, have all sorts of things going on, MRI and the gravitational instabilities, so they, they change. But, uh, but they, they change um, on the dynamical time scale, on the rotational time scale, is like uh, 100 to um, hundreds of years, tens of 10 to hundreds of years. Well, the jet evolution generally on a much smaller time scale. So um, maybe we can justify using this steady state uh, disk approach by uh, saying that uh, disk evolve on a longer time scale. Uh, also, the disk is used as a boundary condition uh, for the jet simulation. This way, we uh, don't have to consider uh, uh, consider the couple evolution of the disk and the jets. So that's uh, easier for for simulations. Um, for uh, generally above the disk, we have a a, a thin disk, a thin. Uh, um, uh, uh, seam materials above the disk is called, di we name it as uh, disk corona. And uh, in this corona, you, usually you require a global threading magnetic field uh, that to launch the disk wind. <clears throat> so, um, this, so this is generally within the disk wind model. Sorry. Um, but this, this threading magnetic field, the region of this uh, global magnetic field is still a kind of debate. Um, in, uh, I think in a, man, a month ago, um, uh, Dmitry Ustensky uh, presented in his talk that um, if you have a, uh, in the limit of uh, no magnetic reconnection, uh, if you, if you believe your magnetic field, disk magnetic field is generated by this dynamo process, you get uh, a lot of uh, uh, magnetic loops uh, threading the disk, but uh, in the limit of no re reconnection, these loops generally, as, as you rotate, as the disk rotate, uh, they generally get bigger and bigger, and you can imagine the, but they, re they connect somewhere uh, very high above the disk, but uh, that gives you um, approximate global magnetic field. Um, also, initially, this corona is, is not uh, rotating, but generally, once after you launch the jet, uh, the corona will be co-rotating with the disk. Um, we can justify the initial profile. We have to start from somewhere, but uh, this, we can justify the initial profile by saying that uh, uh, magnetic uh, energy is much greater than the rotational energy initially. Um, so in order, in order to shoot the jets, you also require, uh, with, in order to have a equilibrium, uh, um, a corona, you have to generally require in, uh, the corona is in hydrostatic balance with the central object so that you, uh, you are clear of like any hydrodynamic mechanism of launching the jet. Of, give you a, a pseudo jazz launch hydrodynamically. Um, it's in pressure balance with, also with, in pressure balance with underlying disk. Um, this is uh, also, you have, initially you have to set a force-free configuration. Uh, this really is, uh, because force, uh, magnetic um, Lorentz force is basically usually a J cross B, so that the simplest, uh, uh, way to achieve this is to uh, to assume it uh, to set up a current-free uh, configuration. So um, uh, so that's 
in the next slide, I'll describe that, uh, uh, how we set up the, the, this parietal field, uh, magnetic field, but uh, with, with a power law distribution, we generally satisfy that. Um, also, the, the, the density in the corona is forced off as uh, uh, one, uh, minus, one, uh, one minus uh, three halves. Uh, this is with uh, gamma equals five thirds. This is Euro ideal gas um, equation of state. But this this power law index uh, has generally been uh, been found uh, in agreement with uh, uh, as you found from observations. Uh, uh, Ruben um, uh, Ruben in San, uh, in Santa Barbara he found uh, he. In his talk, he talked about how to uh, how to determine this power law index from uh, large scale, uh, from large observational um, maps of star forming region, um, and uh, what he got the power law index value he got is generally uh, very close to 1.5 minus 1.5. Some previous simulations using this setup uh, 2D. Uh, there are a bunch of 2D simulations and also recently uh, some 3D simulations. This is an uh, example of 3D simulations we have run previously. Uh, oh yeah, um, uh, basically Rashid and Ralph and uh, uh, David Clark. Uh, start with uh, straight field lines. Uh, you can see that um, when you, I'll show you later the velocity prohibition we use. When you perturb the disk, perturb the disk velocity field initially, and you get like a cork ski uh, jet. Uh, that's uh, very interesting, but it's uh, they, they were only able to run it to um, uh, only eight, uh, 80 uh, times our length scale, which is uh, we name it as RI, the inner disk uh, radius, uh, which is mounts to only 2.5 AU in the in, uh, in those Titari jets. I'll show you later the, the scaling too. So the, the uh, but in this work, we start with the different uh, initial toroidal uh, velocity configuration. So uh, the toroidal velocity on the disk is, uh, is set to be zero. Otherwise, it induces uh, a current. Um, that, uh, uh, that is not not to be good to us. And uh, the BZ component is, uh, this is, <clears throat> R0 is the foot point radius that I show you in previous uh, slides. So basically the, the, the foot point uh, of the field lines that with the distance of foot point uh, of the field lines to the, to the star, to the central star. And so mu, equals, mu is the power law index and generally, uh, if you have mu equals one, which that means basically uh, a BZ is constant, that, that gives you a uniform magnetic field lines, magnetic field along the axis, parallel to the axis. Um, but uh, mu equals zero give you a nice uh, analytic solution of potential, uh, so called potential configuration. So basically, uh, BZ equals uh, BZ to the R to the minus one. But it turned out, uh, based on our setup, we use a, a, a hydro, uh, uh, it's a, a complex function, we use complex function to, uh, to solve, to set up this uh, magnetic field. So um, as mu equals, mu equals zero, it's basically expressed uh, as uh, some products of gamma gamma functions, and the gamma of zero is a singularity. So we have to avoid that. So that's why we use actually minus 0.01 instead of zero to, uh, in this setup. Um, and um, also mu equals minus quarter, and uh, this corresponds to actually a bland foreign pane like uh, <coughs> the original bland foreign pane self-similar solution. Um, uh, Ralph, uh, 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 Ralph uh, Conrad and uh, Rashid has, uh, in 2006, they have a paper 
uh, describing a, a different power laws that give you different con configurations. And in, well, once you set mu equals minus quarter, uh, generally that's um, uh, the, 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 the foundation is laid that is correspond to, uh, to the blend form correspondence of blend form pain solution is established in that paper. And also, uh, the last thing I just want to talk about is, uh, is the mass loading. The initially, we set up, um, we have to inject material uh, along the jet axis. Um, this is how we set it. So the Z component of, of the velocity is equals to some uh, dimensionless factor we call the V inject times the rotational velocity, which is uh, assumed to be Keplerian. Um, mass, uh, this determines mass loading because we have a, a, a fixed disk, a distribu a density distribution in the disk and also the corona initially. Um, also, as I talked about, just, just mentioned that we, we perturb the velocity field in the disk. Um, so uh, uh, what we do is offset the center of uh, about... Uh, how the, about the computation of the Capron velocity. Uh, but this uh, offset is, uh, is a vector that with fixed magnitude but varied direction, uh, varied direction as, uh, as shown here is, is rotating uh, in a circle. So basically uh, cosine, uh, cosine theta and the sine theta. Because we use a Cartesian grid, so um, we have to use Cartesian grid, so we have to breaking, uh, break this uh, quadrantal uh, symmetry. Um, the reason why we don't use, uh, uh, we, we gave up on cylindrical geometry is uh, basically in cylindrical uh, coordinates, so you, have, you have these waves uh, went through, going through this um, axis, so that, um, that uh, because you have to treat the physics accurately uh, close to the axis that um, the coordinate, uh, the Cartesian coordinates uh, is turn, out, turn out to be easier to use. Uh, also, this, this is another, this is also a way to mimic those uh, uh, perturbations that in the disk that present could, uh, could give rise to uh, kelvin hemholtz instabilities non-symmetric non instabilities uh, in the jazz. So basically, uh, you start from axisymmetric configuration uh, into a non-symmetric by introducing this kind of perturbation. Uh, also, another group, Edison, Anderson et al., they, they also use similar setup, but just, uh, you also use, um, uh, they, they, uh, what, they, what they did is actually change uh, the mass loading in half of the disk, they, change, uh, they use one mass loading, and the other half of the disk, they use a different value. Um, but it's actually also a, a similar way, a way to uh, do the same thing, the trying to mimic the, uh, this kink mode. So that some more details of computation use this uh, new, new, uh, newly publicly available code uh, called Zeus MP. So basically, it's a parallelized code. Um, MP, I think it uh, stands for MPI. So it's a message passing uh, interface. Uh, this, is, uh, this code is run on SharpNet, which is uh, a, a, um, a high-performance computing network uh, in this area. Uh, can, uh, including McMaster and uh, uni uh, in University of Western Ontario. Uh, I'm not sure if it includes UT. But generally, we use um, um, a 30, uh, it varies. We use 32, or sometimes uh, the highest we use so far is uh, negative 6 CPUs. Um, try to, um, and we, we only divide the, the the simulation box in the, uh, along the jet axis, uh, in the direction along the jet axis. So chopping in, uh, chopping, only chopping this way instead of the, for, the, for the X and the Y. Um, for the disk plane, we don't, 
we don't parallelize it, but uh, uh, just to keep it simple. And Cartesian grid and the disk is at, uh, at uh, z equals zero, as, as shown. Um, and the disk size is generally, is only model the inner disk. So it's generally within one AU. The last unit we use here uh, is corresponds to a, a inner disk edge. Uh, so that's generally assumed to be uh, three times the stellar, uh, three times the stellar mass, the stellar radii. Radi uh, that's uh, generally um, kind of consensus for where the the outreach, uh, outskirts of the magneto, uh, of the stellar magnetosphere reached. Um, so for the digital, for this uh, this source digital is. Uh, basically, uh, that turn that work out to be 0.03 AU. Um, so you have you, when you have a 20 RI, uh, 20 to 26 RI, you still less than one AU for the disk size. And yeah, the resolution is two zones per hour. I try to use this uh, resolution throughout the grid, uh, basically to uh, give you enough resolution for. Uh, Ri is the inner disk edge. Yeah. So that's, as I said, it's uh, basically uh, about three times the stellar radii. So this is the, the longest that we have achieved so far. Uh, we uh, Previous to this, we have done uh, some consistency tests, uh, trying to see the results, if uh, the results are um, consistent with, um, I actually have a, a poster later, you can see that, that because in the 2003 paper, we, we started with, um, uh, we started with street field lines. So uh, it's only reached uh, 80 RI that, that I showed. Um, now it's, uh, we have extended to, you can see that, you can see clearly this, this can you see that? Um, so this is 500 in, in the units of RI. So previously we only reached 80, so somewhere here. And uh, that do not give you uh, enough range to see the full behavior of the jet. Uh, so we are now able to extend it to much more and in, the, in 3D, in three-dimensional. Um, 500 RI is, uh, for digital, is based on one RI is 0.03 AU. 500 RI give you 15 AU. Um, but our goal is uh, to reach 50 AU because as, you, as I, show, I showed that in previous slides, um, okay, maybe I should just, this one, uh, you can see that one pixel, even 0 0.1, 0 0.1 arc, arc second is uh, uh, in, in HST is like 30 AU. So we have to get um, get very uh, uh, big, very large scale in uh, simulation, trying to reach to bid against the observational spatial scale. Or uh, another way is maybe to uh, uh, to wait a few, few years uh, for the technology, opposition technology to develop to be able to resolve the launching region that's close to the disk. So uh, you, you say you, you get to 15 AU now, the goal is 50 AU. Yeah, that's what, right. what does it mean when you say you get to 50 AU? The jet has re reached, uh, reached this far from this 15 AU from the source. So that's what's limiting you. It's just a resource. This is a resource limitation. Um, no, actually, there are. Uh, oh, okay. So the limitation is uh, uh, because generally, once you develop the, this, uh, this jet, you uh, because it's a grid simulation. So uh, we uh, you have to have the there's um, uh, generally once you have a, a load low-density region developed, you can see the district jets are very structured. And low-density region developed, uh, that gives you a high elephant speed because the high elephant speed goes 
goes like uh, v uh, v goes to uh, square root of one over square root of, of density. So low density region develop and you have a high alpha speed. That's the uh, big and uh, there's a uh, for the simulations you have to obey this uh, cron time conditions. That's basically uh, you you cannot have your time step greater than the sound crossing time. That's basically is, so. That's why if you have a high velocities, that give you a low very low time step. Are you saying that you think this behavior is is not difficult? No, no, I'm <laughs> no, I'm. I'm, I'm Yeah, that's so that's what I'm trying. Try conversion testing with density cores and other things. I mean, the I, th this isn't this isn't a new problem. Uh, people do yeah, the, simulations. Yeah, that's right. Deal with how to mass load the jet. In fact, that's the big question. Yeah, that's and right. Everybody has some density floor that's necessary to keep things going. Yeah, that's right. We 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 have put some density floor, uh, but we have to be careful that to not to put a lot of uh, to to density floor not too high because. Once you get too high, then a lot of mass added to the jet. That's uh, also detrimental to the propagation, and also makes the simulation uh, not very physical. So, uh, also another problem we found that once you propagate to larger distance, is that because of this ball shock uh, and because of the equation state we use is uh, is close to adiabatic. Uh, so gamma equals five thirds. Uh, you have a uh, this uh, sound sound uh, sound speed at the jet head gets very high, and uh, that also limiting because the time step also depends on this depends on all these velocities. The sound speed gets too high, and the time step goes goes tiny. So that's what basically limiting us, and we are trying to uh, add some energy. A removing mechanism in that in that bear, but we in there we we have to be careful too because um, how much energy you you remove uh, is physical, so you have to explore. One other brief question: so Have you tried using non-uniform grids? Because that's another thing that's common in the jet community where you spend your resolution at the launching area, and then you know obviously features get bigger and bigger as you get further out. Spend as much time trying to, uh, to track it. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. No. I think Zeus lets you do that pretty easily. Uh, I think the, uh, in our version of Zeus, we uh, we only use uh, this unit. We only we try to keep it keep the zones zoning uniform because we want to capture this uh, this kind of interesting structures all along, but. Uh, in the end, we we can use some uh, what you call coarse grid coarse grid zones that actually loss rhythmic, uh, that's not uniform uh, uh, to keep it to at outer edge. But we generally uh, do not use that for for large extent for a large uh, large portion of our simulation box because uh, um, we're afraid that. Uh, that's going to um, not resolving some, losing some important details. So basically, uh, that's the uh, that's the approach we use. But yeah, this 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 is a good point actually. I think we uh, we can uh, later on we can investigate uh, the other possibilities of in the zoning in the, in Zeus. So this simulation I show, particular simulation I show, is started with mu equals as a mu equals minus 0.01 configuration, and the injection velocity is a 0.003. And so I, I show injection. This dimension is injection velocity. Basically, this is the factor that uh, you get. Factor uh, this injection velocity equals to uh, uh, v z divided by the. Uh, Divided by Kaplan velocity, so it's, uh, you can see it's very low, uh, much lower than the Kaplan velocity. Otherwise, the so is this all of your computation domain that you are showing here. I'm sorry. Is your computation domain larger than the picture you're showing? Uh, I'm sorry. Is your computation domain larger than all what you simulate here, what you show us? 
computational. Yeah, that's that's the that's the simulation. That's the whole computational domain. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's another thing that, uh, so we are limiting, we, we, this, this thing, this, uh, this whole simulation already took us like several days to finish. So if we, the another thing is we want to do is to expand the disk. As I said, this the disk size is uh, still less than one AU based on scaling give, uh, given by digital. So if you expand that, um, yeah, the, the real jazz could be a, uh, could be as wide as like uh, six AU uh, based on later on, based on one source L fifty fifty one RS five uh, measurements, so it could be much larger than that. And this is kind of highly collimated jet. Uh, so what we want to do is uh, yeah expand that on sideways too, but uh, uh, that means um, uh, a longer time to finish the com simulation. Yeah, we, we perturb the disk, uh, as I said, the, the velocity perturbation at the disk. So that uh, actually, that's, uh, that's the, you can see that's the mode, not the symmetric mode you, you see here. This is a slice cut, but I'll, later I'll show you the 3D picture. But uh, this is basically what the mode is actually doing. Um, well, it's, the perturbation is not large, but it's, it's very. Uh, it's only a like fraction of a zone. Uh, we use like this. Uh, this last scale. This is 500 RI. Uh, we we use two zones per RI, so it's like 0.5 RI, but. Um, uh, but the perturbation is generally even smaller than that. Um, so this is the 3D picture that made nicely for the jet. I, you can see that the, uh, the previous one is a slice cut, but it di didn't give you a, a, actually a complete view. But this one, this one does. And you can see that this, uh, as uh, the density are very uh, twisted, the density distribution, the material are twisted. And they kind of, I, I don't think this is uh, very surprising because they, they follow they tend to follow the field lines, and they are very helical. Um, so, kind of this is kind of some some new things that uh, that could be uh, this structure. So this is the advantage of doing this kind of large scale three D simulations that uh, the two D two D simulations you are not, not able to show the helical nature of the density, but. Uh, uh, Observations, uh, because it's a much larger scale, one pixel is for the entire simulation, so they cannot resolve this. But uh, it'd be interesting that later on, if observation can resolve this twisted nature of the density. But uh, the previous, you can see a slice cut, you can see a lot of these holes, but actually they are just an illusion because you cut through a slice. Uh, this, they are really a kind of like, uh, a spiral uh, along the axis. Sorry. And this, uh, these lines, of course, are field lines. Uh, in, he, in this slide, I just want to show you some uh, very some high sensitivities to injection velocity that uh, I have we have discovered uh, while doing trying different parameters in in our simulations. Um, in previous, uh, I'll show you just previous, some previous results. 
um, some previous results in 2D established by uh, Oyed and Pugis 1999, uh, by 2D simulations, they found that uh, this ejection velocity, I, I draw a line here because uh, I'm not sure if you can see uh, that above, uh, if your injection velocity is very low, uh, you get an episodic jet. As 10 to, this is 10 to the minus 5 and 10 to the minus 4. Um, and with uh, a potential configuration, you, you get episodic jets. Um, but if, uh, once you get above uh, uh, 5 times 10 to the minus 4, uh, you get a steady stationary jet. Um, steady or stationary jet. That's what one number one indicates here. So, and also you can see the terminal velocity generally uh, a slight increase with uh, injection velocity. In same thing, almost same thing here, uh, but just different, crit different critical, different transition velocity um, uh, with vertical configuration. Uh, 10 to the minus 3, you still have episodic behavior. With five, uh, 5 times 10 to the minus 3, you get, a steady, uh, you get a steady jet. And you can see the terminal velocity, which is terminal velocity is the, the, the velocity of the jet head that generally increases with the injection velocity too. So that's what I'm trying to show here too. Um, so we use, uh, okay, just the, the particular value for open uh, potential for open configuration, particular transition value uh, based on 2D simulation is 5 times 10 to the minus 4. So uh, what we use here is 0.005 and 0.008. So both, both are above that critical velocity. That means we are in a stationary jet region. Um, but still, um, if, if when you increase the injection velocity, you get a different morphology and also you get slightly, uh, slightly faster propagation. This, is so sh this, this density maps are shown at the same time, at the same evolutionary, uh, if evolutionary time. So you can see that this one with higher injection velocity generally propagate a little bit faster, but you get uh, more structure uh, like closer to the disk in this one than, than a lower injection velocity. But uh, we found actually in, uh, in simulation for, um, for the sake of uh, running a long simulation like what we, I showed, um, uh, maybe stay with lower injection velocity is more wise even though the jet propagates slower. Um, you, get, uh, you get a less low density region and uh, so your time step uh, was able to maintain to a high level. Um, that, that gives you a longer, a longer jet before the time, time steps goes tiny. What, uh, is the, what observations will be sensitive to structures in the jet of this nature? Um, what observations are, will, will be, be sensitive? I mean, these are the kinds of structures here that you're attempting to um, no, the, this is, as I said, this, this observations cannot resolve this, this far because this is 500 RI is only 15 AU, but the observations on digital is only able to resolve like for 30 AU. So, uh, so the observations uh, cannot, this is only within, all within one pixel of the, of the HST image. Some hope that somehow some physical processes, processes on these smaller scales will propagate out. To yeah, that's that's what we're, we're that's what we are trying to investigate. If we uh, if if we run it to a long for a long time and let jet propagate to a uh, to a much larger scale, um, if we can able to uh, we are able to somehow maintain the, uh, the time step to a high level then we can accomplish that goal. We can uh, really be able to compare with observations. It's the dynamics too, it's the rotation that can be resolved. Yeah. That's the trust in the scale. It's the yeah, the, generally it's the radio velocity shifts and also those uh, forbidden line emissions that can be 
can, res can be resolved you know, by, by the observations. So also there's some results on injection velocity by Anderson et al. They found instead of a, a, a transition, uh, the lower injection gives you nice steady behavior. They found that a uh, maximum, uh, a higher mass load could give you um, uh, a nice steady, st uh, could give, uh, the steady state solutions cannot be achieved uh, once you get a, a maximum, a higher a mass load beyond a certain value. And the mass load they use is m dot win, but, um, but it's, it's basically a row density times the injection velocity. So injection, in the OEL and Puget's based on solely on injection velocity because our uh, density in the, at the disk is fixed. But this is a very high injection velocity, as you can see, that we use uh, generally, what we use are generally uh, much lower, uh, lower than 0.01. And we also, we also have this limit uh, 0.01 because um, uh, we have to maintain a self-consistent configuration. If the injection velocity gets too high, our uh, the the z z component of velocity uh, uh, is close to the Capron rotation. That means the son, uh, son, sonic surface would be very close to the disk. That's uh, not physical. So, but we have this maximum for other reasons. This is another start with another mu. Let's um, start with more open, more open field lines initially, actually. Uh, as mu equals minus quarter, so it's similar, to, as I said, similar to blank four and pain model. And you can see the ball shock here in structure. This is also a slice cut. This is a, uh, all of this is logarithmic of, of density. Uh, what I want to emphasize here is actually a result that we found in the, in Puget's at all, 2006, that um, once you have more open, more hourglass uh, field lines initially, uh, you can tend to get this wide angle wind component uh, that at the base, um, at the base of the jet uh, launching zone. So uh, because uh, there are, um, there's a kind of, a, a uh, long time debate about um, whether uh, the jet driven outflows, the outflows are driven by these jets, collimated jets, or at wide angle wind. Um, but we are showing that in the disk wind, by changing this power law index, we can get both uh, a wide angle wind and also the collimated flow, cylindrical collimated. So that's the results trying to show. And this is just give you some feeling about the initial field lines in the 3D, in the 3D uh, simulations. And that's the final field lines. You can see it's all wound up. And that's um, in the disk wind theory, the, this wound up, this uh, my field lines wound up and give you a toroidal velocity that uh, gives rise to a pinching force. That's what's collimated the jet. And uh, this is where the jet head is. The density is not plotted. Um, OK, sorry. I did maybe it's something wrong. No, that's right. Um, sorry, skip to the end. Press the, wrong, press the wrong button. Um, so this is trying to compare observations with the simulations, but this is not a real comparison because, as, as I mentioned, this observational uh, spatial, uh, the observational scale, the observer scale, are much larger. This 1.15 arc second is actually a 30 AU. It's, we have not reached a one pixel size in our simulation yet in the digital. Uh, in the digital case, but still, I just put the parallel just to, to just to uh, to give you a sense of uh, 
the, they are kind of comparable to each other in uh, this. There are two lobes. This is jet rotation, so uh, different velocity uh, on, on each side of the axis. And we get that similar behavior. But this is a slice cut. Uh, but for, for observations, uh, it's usually, uh, the obs for observations, usually in, in integrated map. So integrated along the line of sight. So, so they may, so there, if there, there are some subtle features, they may be smeared out like this. Um, this, okay, so similar in this one. So these two, uh, sorry, I forgot to label. This, is, this, one, uh, this one above is the uh, mu equals minus 0.01 case, and this one below is mu equals minus quarter case just correspond to the two longest uh, simulations I've shown. Show there. Um, also, um, another issue is, is the stability. Uh, we had at all 2003 uh, investigated that st st stability issue starting with the vertical field lines. But the, uh, the simulation I've shown is uh, we start with uh, this m more hourglass uh, field lines. So uh, with power law, this one is the, with the mu equals minus 0.01. And you can see that this parietal field, uh, Z component of the field, magnetic field is, is stronger at the center. Um, as discussed in OEA at all 2003, uh, that gives you um, a stronger magnetic field to give you a, a higher elfin speed. Uh, that generally, how higher elfin, uh, how higher elfin speed means a lower Mach number. So uh, once uh, material gets sub alphanic they tend to be stable. Well, the super alphanic flow are uh, generally unstable. So that's uh, their basic con con uh, their basic conclusion is. Uh, the, this kink mode uh, self-stabilized the cells by generating this, by stretching field lines that generate this um, uh, higher field, higher field strings along the center of the, along the jet axis. And that gives you a lower uh, alphanic Mach number and uh, sub, uh, subsequently you get a sub alphanic flow along center. And uh, that's what stabilized the jet. That's why the jet is able to maintain stable uh, for large distance. And also um, another thing, when we saw when we saw this structure that uh, I showed below, uh, I showed before that is uh, this uh, reminded me of that observational uh, observer often called knots or Herbie Hero objects. But uh, because it's on our, our simulation is much smaller scale, in, a, um, in a, uh, compared to observations, so uh, maybe this is not. But this could be what observer. But who knows what observer could see? Could could be something like this, something like the highly, uh, the twisted. This twisted twisted thing. But because they only take integrated maps, uh, what they see is just uh, individual knobs not connected. Uh, individual uh, knobs not connected, but uh, uh, in, may, in reality, maybe like this, but in a larger, much larger scale. You think you could try to wrap it up in the next five minutes or so? Yeah, I'm sorry. No problem. <laughs> ran, ran over time. Yeah. Um, so I'll skip that. So um, uh, sorry. So because that's work in progress, and uh, so that's basically uh, uh, what we have found so far. And in for seeing uh, for some future looking ahead, uh, uh, because <clears throat> uh, people uh, observations generally and uh, generally found that. That you have a central, a central more hot, uh, a hot central stellar wind component as suggested by uh, by Matt and Puget's 
a uh, few years ago, um, and they are, uh, there are simulations trying to do these uh, two components too. So you have a, a center, central hot stellar wind, uh, uh, probably uh, emerged from uh, an uh, accretion to the star, and then uh, ejected by the star. And then you have a cooler, cooler component, eject, uh, uh, cooler component of disk wind that outside. The net effect is what they got is that uh, this uh, pressure from the central stellar component pushed the disk wind component outward, make the disk wind uh, less collimated, and that's. Uh, generally consistent with observations. And also another thing, another thing is that uh, we only can see, so far we only consider isolated a single star, star disk jet system. But in reality, there are many uh, binary systems. And you can, so this is a new striking result that, that uh, HC30, this, this disk, uh, uh, disk is shown as dark lane and the nice jet and they um, they change they they change their uh, their their morphology over the years, but <clears throat> uh, usually shown as uh, traditionally shown as paradigm for single star for single jet single star um, formation. But uh, uh, but now the, the res new results uh, resolve is a closed binary system. And also, this classical this system has been extensively studied as a closed binary system in uh, in the dark clouds of Linz L15 uh, Linz uh, 1551, and uh, Osorio all modeled it as uh, modeled the uh, envelope disk and circumbinary disk in uh, much more detail, and the, the jet is almost parallel to each other with the very small angles. And uh, for measurements of this jet, uh, this recent paper got the results. The width of the jets is uh, generally confined within uh, 6 AU. They, they, are not, they were not able to resolve the jet, but they were able to put the upper limit to the width of the jets. OK, that's, uh, there, are simulations. there are simulations coming along for modeling, modeling this interacting jet, binary jets. Thank you, sorry for running over time. <laughs> uh, questions, anyone? Uh, what is the rotation velocity, the magnitude of that, tell you? Um, the magnitude is um, generally uh, around 10 kilometers per second. So uh, it's uh, kind of it's low. I'm sorry, what's your? Uh, Can you run an example? I think, think what we get is generally in that range. Uh, oh, OK, a little bit higher. But, uh, so we, what we get is a little bit higher than that, than observations. But, but we are only seeing the inner, por inner portion of it because uh, our box is not big enough on x, y, and x, y, and y direction. So. I might add to that one of the motivations for our project is precisely that point because uh, Anderson and Al, in a very important paper that they wrote a few oh, years okay. ago, pointed out that the rotation is far too much to be brought by an X-ray. There's far too much angular momentum in the jet. It must have come from Um, in the jet, 